How was your day so far, dude? Yeah, yeah it's, it's all right, mate. Yeah, I've been um, in my room at the moment watching the rain thunder down. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. And, um, I just had some food, so yeah, just been uh, kind of chilling this morning, really. Cool, man, that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I've been... Um, <clears throat> But yeah, like I say, I'm, I'm looking, been looking forward to chatting to you for a while. Um, I've been talking to um, people about, um, obviously we'll talk about the new record and we'll talk about uh, your kind of uh, success over the last few years and stuff. But first off, a uh, question for today, man, is um, how do you define success? Because the band has been very successful over the last few years. And obviously you can't necessarily speak to the rest of the, you know, for the rest of the band. But, but personally, yourself, what does success mean to you? Mm as a person? Um, that's a good question. Um, I would say, I mean, it kind of varies, I guess, like for, for all of us, our goal and our version of success has always been to be you know, a household name all over the globe um, and, and be able to go anywhere in the world and, and play our music. Um, but you know, a lot of the time, you see comfort and and success in the fact that you know, like you say, from the beginning until now, the, our fan base has been so strong and so passionate throughout all those years and stuck with us um, and supported us and on a daily basis. You know, we're talking to fans every day and sometimes not even about you know, music or ourselves, sometimes it's about personal issues they have and and helping them through it um, and, you know, getting messages and saying how our music has helped them in, in whatever way possible. So I think, to be honest, truly, that is, is success, is, is to have that connection and engagement with people around the world. Um, for me, anyway, right now, I mean, when we were 14, 15, um, you know, we had dreams of, of doing this and being in this position and, and to be here now and to still be here after however many years it has been, six or seven years, is, is a real achievement. So. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's incredible the amount of success you've had. And obviously, again, another sort of uh, related question. Again, you can't speak for all the members, but, you know, how have you changed and developed? Obviously, you know, you, you had a massive success with the 100, you know, you've had a, some, a massive success with, across the board, been able to work with amazing producers on the new stuff. Um, but I guess personally, how have you changed and developed as a person from that, you know, from, from starting the band and developing and grafting to get to this point? Up until now, what changes have you noticed in yourself? Um, what changes have I noticed in myself? Um, I've noticed that I I can kind of calm myself down a bit more and take things more in my stride and let, let things kind of sink in rather than, um, I guess, at the beginning, it was everything was so fast-paced and obviously we were... We were younger, um, especially in the first album. It was our first chance of, uh, you know, kind of starting to live what we'd always dreamt about. Mm. So um, there was a lot of getting carried away, and <laughs> um, you know, which which we still do. Um, but yeah, I think on a professional level, um, you know, you have to you have to put what's important um, at the forefront, which is you know performing to the best of your ability and making sure that. Um, everyone that you perform to feels exactly what you what you feel with the songs, and, and you're giving them the best that you've got, um, no matter what you know situation you're in. Um, and I think patience as well, definitely yeah. a lot more patience. <laughs> um, um, and yeah, I mean that's about it really. I mean we've grown up obviously from the early years. Um, and this next album is definitely a coming of age album, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll talk about that in a second. I mean, obviously, you know, one of the things you mentioned before is how you do get messages from fans quite a lot. And, and uh, you know, I, I get to work with a lot of young people in my in my sort of day day to day life and, and you know who want to be in bands and who maybe come from you know underprivileged or difficult backgrounds and they might look at you and they might say oh 
you know, I'm never going to get to that level. I'm never going to be there. And, it, and I guess it comes back to the success question and what success means. But what advice and tips have you got for, for, for people that, you know, have struggled, they might not come from the best backgrounds, but they look up to, to your work, they look up to the band, The Hunter, and they look up to you as an artist. Uh, what sort of tips have you got for people to maintain, you know, good mental health? Because I guess you can get quite down quite quite quickly if you're always chasing you know, certain levels of success like we talked about. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, the entertainment industry, whether it be, you know, acting or music or whatever, um, there's a lot of stigma and a lot of pressure surrounding it. You know, there's so many artists and bands and it is it is a hard, um, a hard place to to get your foot in the door for sure. Um, I mean, we had for years, even before the Hunter was released, or anyone knew of the Hunter, we were grinding and and uh, you know we were playing every weekend um, or any day possible that we got a gig uh, ourselves anywhere around the country. We'd we'd go around and um, you know not make any money from it and not play to many yeah. people, <laughs> but. Um, you know, I mean, the thing that made us do that and kept us doing that was that we, one, we loved what you know, playing and making music, and two, we we felt that you know we had something that we could give. Um, so we we always believed that if we kept going, um, we'd get to enough we'd, we'd get out to enough people, um, and that way as well you build experience as well, like just going out and getting in people's faces and playing shows in all different types of areas and, and scenarios you you learn a lot about yourself on stage and how to deal with certain scenarios um, um and you know yes we were spending all of our money from part-time jobs or whatever and into recording and videos and whatever so for us it was kind of just put everything into the idea that at some point it will pay off and we will get some recognition somewhere and someone will take notice and potentially want to, you know, we'll see what we see. Um, <clears throat> and, and that happened, I think. Yeah. It is hard, but I think, you know, I always have a thing of what you put out, you, you will get back. Not that that happens all the time because you're bound to run into some difficult um, situations and things that will slow you down we had so many times where <clears throat> we would before we got signed we'd played to management or labels um that we'd contacted and sent around portfolios of you know what we were doing and photos and stuff and they'd come down and be talking to us for a while about you know potential and yeah. and then at some point we'd play and then they'd you know so that they couldn't take us on or that it wasn't going to work, etc. And we were sat there many a time on the floor in the rehearsal room, you know, broken hearted. But um, within an hour, you know, we were all just banded together again and saying, you know what, that wasn't the time, but someone else is going to come along and we've just got to keep going and keep doing what we do because we could feel that we had something worth, you know, worth fighting for, I guess. Absolutely. Um, but it, it is definitely hard to keep that mentality. <laughs> um, but it is, I think it is a real, a real case of you just got it. If you really believe in it yourself, you, you just keep going at it. I would say as much experience as possible, even from a very young age, just even other musicians, if you meet other musicians, you know, try and connect with them, maybe try and, you know, write music with them. You, you'll always learn something of someone else. Um, and even if you go and write with someone, you know, a friend or, or or another musician that you've met and it doesn't necessarily go well or the way you wanted it to, you'll still come away from that experience having learned something to take on to the next, you know, writing session or the next next scenario like that. So it is just a, a growing and, and building yourself up 100%. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, and, and again, that's a really good positive message. So thank you for that. Um, 
So talking about coming of age and developing, you mentioned about the new record. Obviously, it's coming out. You've been able to work with John Feldman to produce. You've obviously had Travis Barker work on stuff with you as well. Tell me about again another one. You can't speak for all the members of the bands, but for you personally, what's been the you know the, in terms of the new record? I'd rather die than let you in. Like. Like, you know, what have been some of the best moments, some moments that you're going to take, you know, not to be too bleak, you know, but, but like, if you were to, like, look back on your deathbed and be like, I can't believe we got to do that, that was so cool, or just some, some special moments from the recording process and getting this record together. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, there was, there was like, I mean, the whole recording of the album, to be honest, was, like, a, a bit of a dream for us because we'd, one, we'd never made music outside of the UK before, so it was the first time going over to a different country, especially um, LA, is it's just this whole yeah. other world, yeah. <laughs> it, it really is, it's like a, it, it really is like a film over there, and, and you know, there's so many artists over there, because that's, you know, where the entertainment hub is, basically, yeah. so it's just, it's full of possibilities out there, um, and yeah, we were you know, lucky enough to meet John and have him want to do the record with us. Um, I mean, just, just turning up to his house and just being around him, um, you know, seeing all of his accomplishments on, on the walls um, and, you know, all bands that we grew up listening to was like a first kind of shock to the system of like, wow, yeah. you know, to be just in this room and be in this position where we're about to make our own music but with with someone that's had such an influence on us from a from afar for so long um was really refreshing and we had <clears throat> you know before well the last year or so we had to we had to get rid of our good label in the uk and management because we found out lots of awful stuff so you know there was a bit of time where we didn't know what was going to happen or when we could release new music and yeah. etc so then to go from a place of limbo and not really knowing when we can release music again and what to do to then it all kind of getting sorted out and then us going over to america working with john and you know like you said <laughs> there'd be days where we'd turn up and then all of a sudden i think one day josh dunn from 21 pilots turned up yeah, and, and nice. you know, without 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 us even knowing, Feldy didn't even tell us. So we were we were obviously shocked at that. Um, and just being in a room and just you know getting to know people like that and talking to them and watching them watching them work was was a real moment that I'll look back on. I think because they are all such pros. Like Josh Dunn was insane. Travis, obviously, he's you know he's an icon. Yeah. Um, and for every reason of the word, like when when you watch him play and 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 just being around him, it's it's it is the the amount of professionalism is insane. And again, that's through experience. You know, he all, all of them, <clears throat> Feldy included, they're so passionate and they always have this thing of, you know, they always want to strive to be better or there's always something to learn or something to new to work out. Um, and I think that's a big bit of, you know, becoming a musician or an icon like Travis Barker or Feldy is is that hunger to always want to, you know, learn something new or be better. Um, I think that's what, what sets them apart from, from a lot of other people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Pete Wentz as well, you know, grew up from Fall Out Boy, seen yeah, him play yeah. so many times when I was 15, 16 and stuff. And, I used to play bass. I started off learning bass, so oh, nice. Pete was a big influence for me. Um, <clears throat> and Mikey Way from My Chemical Romance met him as well when we were over there. Wow, man! So <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, just the whole thing, really. And and even even little things like you know there'd be days where John would take us to Malibu Beach to go surfing in the morning before a session um, in the studio, and just doing things like that as well just made the experience really special because you know when do you get yeah i mean especially for us you know boys from watford that had this dream to now be on the third album and surfing in malibu with john feldman was just insane yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so i think yeah the whole thing was kind of a big dream come true for us um so yeah i mean we're definitely 
looking forward to doing it again. Looking forward to the future. Yeah, you haven't decided to swap uh, the the misery and the wetness of the UK for LA yet, then. <laughs> Well, I mean, the current state in America isn't too good. No, so, of course not. No. I mean, if if I think, I mean, obviously this year we, we were planned to go over there and tour a lot more, but obviously that hasn't happened. But um, I mean, we'll definitely, when we can, be going back over and to, even if it's just to you know spend time with Eldie and other artists to write more music, we'll definitely be doing that. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. A couple more questions then before we finish. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, some of your creative um, inspirations outside of music, because obviously we <coughs> talked about, you know, how, you know, you might have had, you know, like, like when you were, you know, in the rehearsal room and stuff, when you were down, when stuff wasn't going your way. And I, and I think that's important to talk about, you know, when you're having down days, even now, you know, if you're really struggling, what, what, what do you draw from creatively outside of music? Do you go certain places? Do you see certain people? Obviously, you've had a lot to be happy about this year with, oh, well, obviously, we're, you know, contextually, we've, we've not had a great year, none of us. But yeah. in terms of the record coming out and stuff, it's not been too bad. But, um, like, yeah. you, what, what creative drive do you have outside of music? Where do you go? What people do you see that give you that kind of... Um, that kind of buzz and keep you motivated really if you're not having the best time yeah i mean i think you know <clears throat> back home here it's um i mean luckily for us is that we as a band have you know we met when we were basically uh, you know 14 15 so and we all live we've always throughout our whole lives lived like 10 15 minutes away from each other so We've kind of grown up through the, our teenage years all together, which is quite a special thing to all grow up together. Um, and, you know, not just musically, but, you know, personal lives as well to go through things in our personal lives, but we've done it together. So mm. we've got a big, strong bond. Um, and we've always said it's, you know, like a band of brothers. Um, so, you know, we're, we're lucky in that respect that we've got each other's backs and we all share the same dedication and, and the same memories I guess so that connects us um, and we pick each other up um, all the time uh, together um, musically I mean musically back then when we were that age and things weren't going so right I'd probably be listening to My Chemical Romance definitely they were nice, my nice. all time favourite um, You Meet Six Fall Out Boy, Slipknot, um, Q is what we aim for, uh, Placebo. So kind of, <clears throat> kind of. It. I mean, that was around the kind of emo yeah, of rock course. days. So um, that was heavily influenced us then. And then, you know, got going on from that. Um, it, it then got into kind of King Leon and Arctic Monkeys. Um, but then. You know, with this such a variety of music, like as a to list, I love um, R and B a lot. The nice. weekend, nice. Um, weekend is a huge uh, artist that I look up to. Um, and then you know, old school as well. Um, you know, Led Zeppelin, Free. Nice, My dad yeah. brought me up on Free. Um, absolutely love Free. Um, Roger Daltrey, the legend. Um, so yeah, there's there's so many different influences, but I think as well as a as the vocalist and lyricist, we've always um, and I've always wrote, you know, from from personal experience mm, and yeah. kind of whatever is hap happening to me or or the guys um, or people that we care about in in life really. Um, and this new record is kind of it, it's about the last i guess two years or the last years since the second album and kind of what's happened and how we've developed people yeah yeah absolutely man absolutely. And, and i think uh, just to just to go back to you know talking about la and how it's such an entertaining place to be i wanted to ask you if you could pick a track maybe it's something off the new record that people haven't heard yet or maybe it's something from your from your past if you could rip out uh, the soundtrack of your favorite film and put in a hundred track uh, again, maybe maybe a new one, maybe an old one. What film would you pick to to, to soundtrack with the band, and why? Oh, that's a really good question. What film? This is tough as well because we like our movies 
we we watch a lot of movies. We yeah. we've actually when we were before the Hunter, when we were called Alaska Campus, we wrote a whole EP based on um, films that we love, and nice. we based them on characters' perspectives. Nice. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, so sometimes we do that, but oh god, there's so many films. What's one of my favorite yeah. films right now? Well, um, might be good to do for one for the new record because obviously, again, a lot of introspection, a lot of stuff you've gone through over the last couple of years. So maybe, maybe, maybe would it simplify it if I said do it with the new record? If the new record could soundtrack a film, or would it would it uh, would it make it harder? Uh, <laughs> um, if the new record's good, if the new record could soundtrack a film, I would say... Oh, I've got to think of a film that maybe all of us would like. Sorry, man, I caught you off guard with that Trace one. Tracy on the Pine? Yeah, it's okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, I was going to say, it catches people off guard, that one, but, uh, but I, uh, I always like it, because obviously it's a, it's a good creative question. Is there, a, is there any particular? Yeah. Is there any particular? Because I haven't seen. Is there, is there any particular reason you would pick that film? I haven't seen it. So. Um, I mean, it's one of my my favourite films. It's, it's a film of two halves, basically, um, and they're two separate stories, but they're connected. Um, it's quite a quite a dark film um, and very gritty. Um, and I'd say it's got a lot of angst in the beginning and then throughout, um, you know, there's positives, but there's a kind of underlying tension and there's a, there's a big story in it of like revenge. Right. And I think this, this new album, um, has got all of those things. It's a lot, it's a bit darker to, to the first two records right. that right. we, that we've had out. Um, and and it is a lot grittier but then there's you know there's beautiful moments but quite sad and there's definitely parts of revenge on the album because of the label stuff the ex label stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it definitely it definitely fueled us for for this album so a bit darker but it's still the hunter like yeah. it's, we always will be as our sound is our sound it's unique but um yeah, we've as I said, we've it's a coming of age album. We've learnt a lot about ourselves and the world and our perspectives have changed on a few things. So it's um a bit I just a bit more serious, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So have you felt would you say you've found the catharsis again, another one that you could only speak for from yourself, but you know, with with your writing and with the development of this record, would you say you found catharsis or are you still feeling a bit vengeful, are you still feeling a bit, you know, a bit darker? Um, in your own in your own mind, or um, does this record sort of ease that for you? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely it was definitely a catharsis uh, making it, um, writing it, and, and you know, watching the songs come come to life from what we had in our head and the feelings of it. Um, it's, it's it's come out probably better than than I even thought in my head. So we're super excited about it. Um, and it's definitely helped us to, to to put some things to bed. I mean, there's still, um, you know, bits of anger and, and stuff there. It still hasn't completely gone, but um, it definitely helped us to get into this next chapter for us and to put a few things to bed and move on. Um, but I think, you know, when we can finally be able to be on a stage with fans and play the songs live as well that's going to be a whole new um thing of catharsis i think that's going to really let us take it all out um so yeah nice one man nice one i hope you uh hope you find i hope you get to do that and get to go out to la again it's uh it's a beautiful place i certainly found it to be uh pretty chill when i was out there and obviously i'm looking forward to seeing you guys uh live um, you know, uh, we, 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 we're up in Hull, so I think, you know, and I think a lot of people, I think a lot of gigs have been cancelled and a lot of stuff has been cancelled tour-wise, but I'm looking forward to catching you guys in maybe next year, I'm thinking now. So, fingers fingers crossed, yeah. you know what I mean? So, fingers crossed, dude. But yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, everything's been... 
Yeah, yeah, we've been re- rescheduled for next year, so yeah, keep an eye out. But yeah, just yeah, come yeah, along, it'll be great. Yeah, oh, right. yeah, I guess that's it. Just yeah, just to finish off, have you got a message? You know, anything you want to plug? Um, have you got a message for for fans that have supported you through this time? You know, obviously your your music's going to be helping people through difficult times, and obviously making the music has helped you. So just just quickly, any any message for fans and, and, and anything you want to plug really? Um, yeah, I mean, just want to say. A massive thank you to all the fans that have, you know, um, supported us so passionately from day one to to this day now. The past year has been a, the toughest time for us as a band and something that we never thought we'd have to go through. Um, but we were honest from the get-go with, with the fans and they've stuck by us and, and supported us and that's pushed us on and given us a lot of strength and confidence in times where sometimes you know it was hard to know what was going to happen um so you know they're a huge part of this record um along with everything else that we do um we just can't wait to 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 get let everyone hear it and to pray for everyone again and be with everyone really absolutely man beautiful message to finish on thank you so much for your time really appreciate it have a good day have a good rest of your day buddy Yeah, you too, mate. Thank you. Yeah, no worries, man. Take it easy. All right, speak to you soon.